Good morning, Apollo Baptist Church. It is Monday. It is December 28th. And uh, we've experienced the Christmas event. Uh, we had a great time with our family. Uh, they showed up on the day after Christmas. And our grandkids are still with us. And uh, they sleep in the room where I typically have my time with God and also where I do the blog. So the background here is a little different. It's our office rather than uh, the library where I hang out. I want us to think together, um, not exhaustively, but just uh, briefly about our God who prophetically stated in advance hundreds and hundreds of prophecies regarding the Messiah. A prophecy is a, a statement that something's going to happen. And then when it happens, you begin to realize whoever said that knows something that you didn't know. Um, one of the characteristics of the Bible and of our God is that he knows all things. There's nothing that happens that catches him by surprise. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. Uh, he is all-knowing. He is all-present. He's all-powerful. And so if you are all-powerful and all-knowing, you can make statements about the future and you have the power and the wherewithal to make them happen. None of us can do that. So therefore, prophetic statements are a mystery to us, to say the least. Um, but this Messiah that we celebrate, Jesus Christ, born in Bethlehem, born of a virgin, um, of the lineage of David, all of those things were, were stated prophet, prophetically um, some uh, uh, a thousand or more years before uh, the time of Jesus himself. Uh, just some examples. Um, obviously, the, the uh, statement that, uh, Behold, you will have a sign, and a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and you will call his name Emmanuel. Uh, that was fulfilled and stated so in Matthew chapter 1, uh, verse uh, 20 through 22. Uh, a direct fulfillment that uh, a virgin will give birth. Uh, this birth would take place in Bethlehem, not just any Bethlehem, but Bethlehem of Epaphrath. There was more than one Bethlehem. It says in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, But as for you, Bethlehem, Epaphrath, you're too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you, one will go forth for me to be the ruler in Israel. It's a, it's a prophetic statement. Uh, and that that's exactly what happened. Uh, when the wise men came to Jerusalem and said, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? Herod was greatly disturbed. And he called the scribes, the Bible experts, and said, Where is the Messiah to be born? They quoted Micah chapter 5, verse 2. And so uh, Herod said, go to, go to Bethlehem and find him. And when you have, come back here and tell me so I can come worship him. Of course, we know that he wanted to go kill him. Well, um, they went and they found him just as it had been spoken. And they found Mary and uh, the baby, and they gave him gifts. And uh, that night, God spoke to Joseph through an angel and said, Get out of town. Herod's going to try and kill you. So they immediately got out of town. Uh, the wise men did not go back and tell Herod where he was. He became enraged, and so he said, I will kill every baby boy in that area, two years old and younger. Interestingly enough, it had been prophetically stated that this kind of tragedy would happen in Jeremiah 31, 15. Thus says the Lord, a voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation, bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. In Matthew chapter 2, verses 16 through 18, it indicates it is a direct fulfillment 
that because uh, Herod had killed all of the baby children, boys, in that area, two years old and younger, that this, this fulfilled the prophecy of Jeremiah. Um, the prophecies go on and on and on. It tells that he will ride a donkey into Jerusalem. It says that by his scourging and by his uh, uh, wounds that we are healed, uh, speaking of the crucifixion, it even specifically speaks in, in Psalm 22 that his hands and his feet would be pierced. A thousand years before uh, Jesus' crucifixion, at a time when crucifixion wasn't even practiced. In Psalm 16, verse 10, it says that the Messiah's soul would not be abandoned, or his body would not be abandoned to Sheol. He would not decay. And in Acts chapter 2, the early Christians realized this was a fulfillment of a prophetic statement regarding the resurrection. Um, people have tried to look at the prophecies and and create a um, a statement of evidence. Obviously, there he has to be who he said he was. Prophecies can't be fulfilled otherwise. And I would agree with that. Uh, but I just want to ponder uh, God's plan with you and me just for a moment. Number one, God has a plan. Uh, Clearly, God's not flying by the seat of his pants. Clearly, God knows what he wants to do. He stated hundreds or a thousand or even more years prior what he was going to do and some details about it. God has a plan. Praise God. Number two, God will, in fact, fulfill his plan. Lots of people make promises, but God makes promises and then fulfills his promises. That's our God. That's why we celebrate the promises of God, because you know if God promised it, it's going to happen. That's why we sing and celebrate standing on the promises, uh, because our God doesn't leave promises undone. But there is a third thing that I want to leave you with today regarding our great God that knows the future, has a plan, will fulfill his plan. He wants you and me to be part of his plan. You see, the plan of God to send the Messiah was for no other reason than that you and me would come to him and be forgiven of our sins. We live in a, we live in a crazy world. We live in a world that's broken and messed up because of sin. And we see that. Uh, 2020 has been a hard year. No one would deny that. Uh, we're looking forward to 2021. The reality of it is God was with us in 2020 and God will be with us in 2021. Uh, we have a few days left in 2020. Let's make the most of it. But the reality of it is God wants me to be part of his plan. God's not defeated by COVID. God's not defeated by our difficulties. Therefore, neither are you, neither am I. As we step uh, through the rest of this week and as we step into next year, I want you and me to do it not just hoping for our best, but experiencing God's best in my life, your life, our life, our church, as we move ahead. That's not guesswork. That is the plan of God. God has a plan. God will fulfill his plan. And God wants you and me to be part of his plan. Now that, my friend, is the foundation for a happy new year. And so I'm going to say it. Happy New Year. See you next year.